welcome. Due to the length of this video, I'd like to share the contents and some time markers with you so that you can navigate through the video however you'd like. The total length of the video is about 19 and a half minutes. From the beginning to the 834 mark is a look back in time at how the district's growth has changed. At the 835 mark, our architect will share the schematic design of the current middle school high school project. At the 1557 mark, we will share some financial information with you. And at the 1756 mark, we'll begin some closing remarks. Thank you. Hello, my name is Jeff Hadley. I am the superintendent of the Avonmore School District. Thank you very much for taking your time to watch this video. The purpose of this video is to provide our school community with an update on the upcoming construction project that will take place at the middle school and high school campus. The exciting part of this video will be the architect sharing uh, the details of the schematic design of the project. However, I'd like to begin this video by sharing some history with you. The history is really important because the current project is actually part of a continuous and very careful planning process that began around 2004. First, let's take a look back in time and review how our district has been growing. If we go back to 1982 through 1992, our average enrollment was about 1,000 students K-12. From 1993 to 2003, our average enrollment increased to about 1,300. The overall impact on enrollment over this time was an additional 288 students K-12. through The first action taken by the district to address the growth was a renovation at the middle school high school campus in 1999 and 2000. At that time, the middle school gym, middle school classrooms, and central office were added to the middle school high school building on the secondary campus. Recognizing the district's continued enrollment over the last 20 plus years and anticipating continued growth, the school board and administration at the time wisely began to investigate what the available options may be for the future. In 2007, Thomas and Williamson was hired to conduct a feasibility study. The purpose of this study was to evaluate the district's current facilities and obtain options for the district to consider. The study provided a variety of options and new construction was identified as the most appropriate and feasible option to address the district's continued growth. In 2010, a demographic analysis was conducted to validate the anticipated growth of our district and our district's enrollment. This study was conducted by Peggy Lovell from the University of Pittsburgh, and her study did indicate that the district would continue to see growth. Following the demographic study, the district submitted the necessary documentation to the Pennsylvania Department of Education to receive approval for the new construction project. Approval from the Department of Education is a process in place to ensure school districts do not use tax dollars for, for construction that is not necessary. With approval granted from the Pennsylvania Department of Education, the district purchased the property where the Avonworth Primary Center is now located. In September of 2012, the district broke ground on construction for the primary center and the building opened in 2014. Prior to building the primary center, grades K through five were located in our elementary building and grades six through 12 were located at the middle school high school building. At that time, the district's growth and enrollment was beginning to impact capacity at both the elementary building and the middle school high school building. One of the critical strategies when building the primary center was to create capacity at the elementary building to enable moving sixth grade down to the elementary once grades K through two moved into the new primary center. We knew it would become necessary to move the sixth grade out of the middle school high school due to the growth of, en growth of enrollment that was impacting capacity at this building. In addition to taking pressure off the capacity issues at the middle school high school building, moving sixth grade to the elementary building provided the district with the time needed to create a plan in the capital that would be needed to eventually do an expansion and renovation at the middle school high school building. Let's pause here and take a look at the district situation in 2014. At that time, Avonmore School District was recognized by the Pittsburgh Business Times as the second fastest growing school district in the Pittsburgh area. From 1994 to 2014, 900 new homes were built in Ohio Township. Our student enrollment at the time was 1,570 students K through 12, and that student enrollment was about a 16% increase from 2004 to 2014. Over that time, that's an additional 208 students that were added to our enrollment and if you look back to the 1980s all the way through 2014, 
That's an addition of almost 500 students in our school district enrollment. Moving beyond 2014, we can definitely see how our district has continued to grow by looking at the enrollment of our middle school and our high school. That enrollment grew from 724 students in 2006 to 851 students in 2016. In 2017, we moved our sixth grade down to the elementary building due to the increased enrollment at our middle school high school building. Looking at the enrollment at our elementary building from 2017 to 2021, we continue to see growth there as well. In 2017, we had 553 students at our elementary building, and this year we have 612 students. We can also look at our growth through our kindergarten enrollment. In 2017, our kindergarten class was 138 students. Since then, we've begun to see kindergarten classes in the mid-160s. Recognizing that our growth was continuing and having moved sixth grade to the elementary building, the planning process continued. The first step taken was the hiring of Dr. Shelby Stuman to conduct another demographic study for the district. Dr. Stuman's study was completed toward the end of 2018 and presented to the school board in February of 2019. His study predicted our enrollment to be about 1,900 students in 2021, which we are very close to today. By 2028, Dr. Stuman predicted that the district's K-12 enrollment will climb to about 2,100 to 2,200 students. To begin investigating how the district would address this growth, IKM Architecture was hired in 2020 to conduct a feasibility study and present the district with a facility master plan. The study was conducted using what is called a School Design Action Team, also referred to as the SDAT. The SDAT consisted of parents, teachers, community members, students, administrators, and board members. Before diving into the work of generating ideas, the team created guiding principles that would be used to guide the work of the SDAP, but also the project moving forward. These guiding principles are as follows. One, create flexible, innovative, and inspiring spaces that maximize learning. Two, consider the district and long-term impact by considering fiscally responsible and efficient solutions. Three, ensure spaces prioritize physical health, mental health, and safety of our students. And four, provide solutions that celebrate the values of Avonworth and foster a sense of community and pride. The School Design Action Team met during several all-day workshops to unpack our facilities, strengths, weaknesses, and also identify priorities that needed to be addressed in a future construction and renovation project. Members of the team also made visits to other schools to gather ideas that align with our guiding principles that could also be incorporated into our conceptual ideas. IAKM was hired in February of 2021 as the official architect for the project and took the input from the School Design Action Team to create the schematic design for a construction renovation project at the Middle School High School building. At this time, I'll turn it over to Matt Hansen from IAKM who will take you through the current schematic design, but keep in mind that this design is still preliminary and changes may occur as the process continues. Matt, you can take it away. Thanks for that, Dr. Hadley. We are excited to be in a position at the conclusion of our schematic design phase to be able to share out the progress and development that has occurred since the completion of the feasibility study at the end of last year. Since that time, we have focused on reimagining the campus circulation experience from how one enters the site, navigates to various destinations, and exits again in a more efficient manner. Safety and security have been at the forefront of those discussions with district officials. We have developed a plan that separates the parent drop-off and pickup procedure from the bus drop-off and pickup sequence. Additionally, we have identified numerous new pedestrian pathways as a campus-wide wayfinding effort to reduce confusion and congestion to get our students, faculty, and visitors from their vehicles, no matter where they park, to the building entrances safely and effectively. Traffic calming devices such as crosswalks, speed tables, and rumble surfaces will provide additional measures to make sure those navigating the campus are reminded that safety is paramount and vehicle speed needs to be kept in check. One of the strategies to assist in the wayfinding experience is to emphasize and celebrate the new singular main entrance. This new front door to the school is a prominent feature designed to clearly and attractively welcome the community to this new exciting facility. A new language of materials and geometry are meant to complement and enhance the existing components of the building that will remain. 
We believe that this new aesthetic is a way to celebrate and represent all of the exciting and innovative learning that happens inside the building every day. The new entrance also represents an opportunity to rebrand the campus with a consistent and cohesive brand strategy. The structural elements of the building are used to accent that colorway, reinforcing the pride that our students have in their school. Throughout the campus development, we have looked for opportunities for outdoor learning. Our teachers are already doing this, breaking out of the limitations of the four walls of their classroom and allowing students to explore in new and exciting ways. All we are doing with the building design is recognizing the need for more efficient space that can be used more purposefully for the activities for outdoor learning. The emphasis on outdoor learning continues at the southeast corner of the building where a new two-story addition will be constructed to house the 6th, 7th, and 8th grades. The aesthetics of this new addition align with that of the new main entrance, continuing the use of red exposed structure as an accent to reinforce the brand. Here, two outdoor classrooms are shown, one on the first floor as a plaza, and one on the second floor as a learning terrace. Let's move up and pop the roof off to look down inside the new middle school. You can see that we are no longer simply designing classrooms to line either side of a sterile corridor. Instead, grouping classrooms together around a shared common space is a more effective design to inspire collaboration, cross-disciplinary engagement, and a greater sense of community within the school. These classrooms are grouped in pairs, with the wall dividing them having the ability to fold out of the way. This flexibility enhances the integrated learning concept already in use in the current middle school. In talking to our faculty, one of the most common requests was for flexible space. These movable walls, the overhead garage style doors, and the visibility into and out of the classroom are all tools that allow students and teachers to reshape and reimagine their classroom in a very fluid way. Another request that we heard from students and faculty was the desire for a student resource space that was just for the middle school. This space will support reading activities, STEM and maker-based project learning, and team collaboration. It also makes efficient use of the space created by the dominant connecting device that we call the learning stair. This terraced seating area is intended for large presentations, integrated learning opportunities, as well as hangout and gathering space for activities before and after school. It also plays a central role in physically and visually connecting the second floor with the first floor as a cohesive and unified new middle school. While many improvements were made to the existing high school spaces, the biggest change will be the relocation and reimagining of the library. The current library will be converted and renovated to additional classroom and support space. But where the library reappears is a pretty innovative idea that came directly from your own faculty in one of our discovery workshops. The idea is to open up the space between the auditorium and the main gymnasium. The first floor can then better support the cafeteria seating requirements as well as serve as pre-function and support space for evening events in the gymnasium and auditorium. But raising the roof in this area allows us to create a second floor library mezzanine and connect it back to the first floor with another learning stair. This now becomes the heart of the school, where students will begin their day, gather at lunch, work during open mods in their schedule, and likely where they will wrap up a full day of learning. Sight lines and visual connectedness throughout enhance safety and security, reinforcing that feeling of community. As for the library, it serves a very different role in today's school than in the past. It's still very much a student resource, but the resource is the space itself as opposed to the books inside. Having space to work together and explore various subject matter is critical to any innovative educational environment. But there's an added bonus to this second floor mezzanine. It also affords us the opportunity to increase the seating capacity of the main gymnasium with a little creative structural engineering. This seating is collapsible so that when they are not needed, the windows are closed and the bleachers fold up and out of the way. But on game night, when we open up the windows and expand our capacity, we can add about 200 seats with this strategy. The guiding principles that Dr. Hadley shared continue to direct and guide the design team to find flexible and efficient design solutions that will deliver an optimal tool for students and educators in this new exciting chapter of the life of Avonworth Middle School and High School. We are working with construction management experts to ensure that the project stays on budget and can be built in a safe and efficient manner. 
At IKM, we are honored to be part of your community and partnered with you on this journey to reimagine the state-of-the-art contemporary learning environment worthy of the Avonworth name. Go Lopes. Thank you very much, Matt. I hope you found that as, as exciting as I have found it. When Matt flies you through the building and over the property, it certainly brings the project to life and definitely creates excitement for what the future may hold on this campus for our students. To move forward, there are two additional items I want to share. First one is that we had to hire an architect for the project. In February of 2021, our board hired IKM to continue on with the project and be the architect of record. Also, in August of 2021, the board hired construction manager for the project, which is Macero. Macero will represent the school district throughout the entire project as our construction manager. Now, let's look at the financing and financial impact of these projects. First, the primary center project was funded from district-issued general fund bonds of approximately $25 million. At the completion of the primary center project, the district had $2.7 million remaining in its capital project fund for future projects. The district took advantage of a favorable market and refinanced the bonds used for the primary center project, saving the district $660,000 over the life of that debt. The impact on taxes was approximately $70 per year for a property valued at $100,000. On this slide, we are showing the changes in our district's millage following the primary center construction project. Since the primary center project, our millage has only increased twice. Those increases are not directly tied to debt incurred from the primary project, but also from additional staff that has been necessary due to our growing enrollment. The chart at the bottom of this slide shows the staff that has been added from 2014 to today. This slide illustrates where Avonworth's millage stands in comparison to the Northern Area School Districts. Our millage is the fourth lowest at 19.53. The average millage for Allegheny County School Districts is 23.27. Also, Avonworth's real estate tax rate is eighth lowest among the 43 Allegheny County School Districts. To move forward on the next phase of our facility planning, the district had a $5 million bond issued in October of 2021. However, the debt service from this bond was offset by the savings realized from the refinancing of the bonds from the primary center project. Our current peak debt service millage is about 2.5 mils which equates to $3 million in our school district budget. The district's construction manager and architect for the upcoming project are currently working on the estimate for the upcoming project and more information will be coming soon. To keep up to date on this project, you can visit the construction update page on our district website and also attend our building and grounds committee meetings, which are usually occurring on the third Monday of each month. You can attend those meetings either in person or virtually. In closing, there are two additional projects I'd like to point out. In 2018, the district built a large group instruction room at the back of the high school to support our integrated classes. You can see that addition at the back of our high school adjacent to our outfield of our baseball field. Lastly, if you've happened to have been around our middle school high school campus recently, you likely have, have seen what appears to be construction activity already occurring. In January of 2020, the district had the opportunity to purchase land adjacent to the middle school high school campus. With that purchase, the district has, is putting in a new parking place because parking was identified as one of the most uh, urgent needs on this campus. The additional parking will be completed in October of this year and add an additional 183 parking spaces on the middle school high school campus. Thank you very much for taking your time to watch this video. I'm extremely excited about what the future holds as we continue to transform our learning spaces to provide our students with the most inspiring and innovative learning environment possible. Thank you very much.